Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for tuning in today. Unfortunately, it's raining like crazy in here lately, so today I wanted to create something cute and colorful for a change. I've been also looking for ways to include the seamless pattern designs which I have created in some of the physical products, so this is exactly what we're going to be doing today. We will create these uh, cute magnetic bookmarks which you can include in your small business store or give them to your family or friends. I will be obviously linking these patterns down below so you can download them and use them for your personal projects. This is a beginner-friendly tutorial, so this can be your first Cricut project ever. But still, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will address them gladly. Great, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's start with gathering the necessary supplies for this video. The first and uh, very important is the magnetic photo paper. This one is quite heavy and designed uh, specifically for Canon Pixma printers, so this is uh, what I'm going to be using today. The sheet itself is uh, 4 by 6 inches or 10 by 15 centimeters and it has the white glossy finish and this magnetic um, surface on the back of it. There is a wide range of other magnetic photo papers available on the market, so go and check it out and choose the one which specifically fits your needs. As mentioned before, uh, for this tutorial I will be providing a set of uh, seamless patterns which you will be able to use for your designs. So I would quickly show you how to import and rescale your uh, patterns in Photoshop. So right click on the uh, pattern which you want to import to Photoshop and choose the option open with Photoshop. It will then automatically open up the uh, seamless tile in uh, your program. And we want to uh, choose the edit option in the top bar and click define pattern. You can basically change its name, but I'm going to leave it at that and click OK. After that, as you might notice, uh, this uh, seamless style will be available under your patterns uh, menu in Photoshop. This means that you will now be able to manipulate this design as a pattern. Basically resize it, rescale it as much as you want. Great, so let us now go ahead and create the uh, canvas where we're going to be rescaling our pattern. Go ahead and click New in the top bar in order to create a new file. Since our magnetic paper is 10 by 15 centimeters, uh, this is exactly the format I'm going to choose. If you don't have that format in your default settings, you can choose the custom file and then adjust the dimensions of your uh, canvas on the right side. Now that we have our blank canvas uh, created, we want to click a layer and choose the option new fill layer pattern. After pressing OK, I will be able to proceed and see all of the patterns which I have imported into Photoshop in this drop down menu. So this is the latest pattern I have imported. I can adjust its scale so I can make the individual elements of the pattern really, really small if I want to. So with a scale of 15%, this is how our pattern is going to look like. So following the same steps, I have already imported the patterns which I have linked for this video. So now I will go back to the uh, 10 by 15 canvas which we created earlier and I will fill it in with my uh, imported pattern. I have deleted the previous fill layer and will proceed to choosing layer, new fill layer and then uh, filling it in with the pattern which I have uh, imported and which I want my magnetic bookmarks to be in. I will always kind of play around with the scale to see what looks better. In this case, 20% uh, might be too big. And uh, keep in mind that this is 10 by 15 uh, magnetic paper sheet, so you have to kind of imagine how this is going to look like uh, on the final product. I'm going to be creating uh, two sets of magnetic bookmarks, so I want this second set to be in a different uh, color, so I will create the new canvas and choose the a different colored pattern and just like before I will reduce the scale to around 18% I think this looks fine and then I will basically export my files as PNG you can do that by choosing the quick export as PNG or um, export where you can basically adjust some of the uh, settings of the exported file
Great, so now that our design files are ready, we can go ahead and open them up on our computer and choose the print option. After that, we will adjust the paper size, which is in our case 4 by 6 inches, and we will also choose the option scale to fit in order to fill our whole page. I will also adjust the quality to best and media type photo paper. This provides the best print results. So I have basically loaded the magnetic photo paper sheet into my Canon Pixma printer and these are the final results. The sheet came out extremely vibrant and very nice. The print quality is actually quite great. I'm happy with it with the exception of uh, the kind of black streaks on one side of the uh, paper. This might be due to the fact that the paper itself is quite thick um, and it curled a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure, I will have to try uh, some different settings of my printer. In general, I'm very happy with the result. As you can see, the sheet itself is quite glossy and good looking. I have then proceeded to measuring how many magnetic bookmarks are actually going to fit on one sheet of the paper. Since I'm going to fold my bookmarks in half, I want them to be at least 10 centimeters long and uh, 3 centimeters wide. So unfortunately, I'm only going to be able uh, to fit two bookmarks on this small sheet of magnetic paper. Another issue is that I have some black smudges on one side of the uh, paper, so I obviously don't want it to be included on my bookmark. So I will have to waste just a little bit of the material. Great, so after a little bit of brainstorming, I'm ready to create my cut files in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to press New Project in order to create the canvas where I will be uh, creating my cut files. So this time I did not create the design in some other uh, graphic uh, design program. I think we can achieve pretty good results in Cricut Design Space. So go ahead and choose Pennant from your uh, Shapes menu. So my idea is to duplicate this pen and shape and create the um, long bookmark with the uh, fold in the middle. So I'm just uh, basically going to select the shape once again and press Command D or Control D in order to duplicate it. I will then rotate this new duplicated shape by 180 degrees and align it with the original pennant so that it creates one unified shape. You can basically move your shape with the arrows on your keyboard. This is going to give you this perfect control over how you want this shape to look like. I will then select both shapes and press the uh, combine button and choose the option unite. As you can see, our two pennants are now combined into one and we can basically manipulate this shape uh, as we want. So I will go into the upper menu, remove the proportions lock and adjust the length of the bookmark to 10 cm and its width to 3. After positioning it in the corner of the canvas, I'm going to click Ctrl or Command D in order to duplicate it so that uh, we have basically two bookmarks alongside each other. And I'm going to rotate them by 90 degrees because this is exactly how I want them to appear on my material. As the last step, I'm going to select both shapes and click Attach. As you remember, I have some smudges on the sheet, so I'm going to move my cut files a little bit to the right so that the bookmarks at the end of the day are not destroyed by these smudges. I always kind of look at the grid in the Cricut Design Space and then compare it to my uh, Cricut Mat so that I know exactly where to position my cut files. In this case, I think this will be uh, good. So I will click Continue and I will connect my a Cricut Maker and choose the base material type. Since the material this time is quite thick, I'm going to choose the setting Light Chipboard. You can find it in your All Materials section. I already have it bookmarked, so I'm going to choose it and I will also adjust the pressure of the blade to more. Great, so it's now time to stick our material to the Cricut mat. 
So uh, it is quite thick, so I'm going to have to make sure that it doesn't move around while cutting because uh, this might lead to some issues. So first I will press it down with my hand and then take this plastic from my Cricut mat and go over uh, it once again with my scraper tool to make sure that there are no air bubbles. As an extra step I will take this um, tape and I will uh, tape all four corners of my material to the mat. This way I will make sure that my material is not moving around while cutting. So when cutting through the thicker material your Cricut design space will prompt you to move your star wheels, so these white wheels, uh, to the right. So this is exactly what I did in order to uh, avoid uh, track marks on my material. So after loading your mat into the Cricut machine we can basically sit back, relax and enjoy watching how our cutting machine is doing everything for us. So after the cutting is performed I like checking whether it was cut properly on all the sides. In our case yes, so we can unload the mat and see the final result. So a little quality check, as you can see there is this thingy in the middle. Uh, where two shapes were connected um, looks like I did not align them properly. I don't mind it uh, that much, but I think I will try to fix it. So let's go back to Cricut Design Space. Uh, we will unattach our files or we will basically just delete them and start everything from the beginning. Uh, so going back to the shapes menu, we will choose this pennant shape, duplicate it and try to align it a little bit more carefully this time. So I will basically duplicate the shape and position it exactly on top of our original one. Then I'll go into the upper menu and rotate the shape by 180 degrees so that it's still perfectly aligned and perfectly on top of the original one. And then following the same steps as before, we're going to unite our two shapes and adjust their size. I feel like we can fit a longer bookmark on our uh, material, so I'm going to go with uh, 12 centimeters this time. This way we can avoid wasting that much material and also ensure that our product is working properly. The grip of the uh, magnetic paper which I have chosen is not that strong, so the bigger the bookmark, the bigger the surface it can basically stick itself to, so I think this is going to uh, work uh, better. Just like last time, I'm going to move my cut files a little bit to the right in order to exclude this smudged area of my final product. Since the settings uh, which we have chosen for our cut files work very well, we're not going to change anything here, uh, we will go ahead with light chipboard and more pressure. So as you might notice in this video I'm using the Fabric Grip uh, Pink Mat. Uh, this is due to the fact that my light grip is not uh, that sticky anymore and I find the Fabric Grip working pretty well in this case. Even though the grip is quite strong on this cutting mat, I will still go over the edges with the tape. Now let's enjoy some ASMR cutting. So our 12 cm bookmarks are ready, they look lovely, I really like this uh, color, I think it looks even better than the first one and uh, we're ready to proceed with our last step. In order to ensure the easy folding of our bookmarks, I'm going to be using the scoring board for this one, but you can basically use the ruler in order to fold your bookmarks. I have then basically positioned uh, my bookmark on the scoring board so that I can easily determine where the middle of the bookmark is. After that I went over the middle with the scoring tool and folded it into. 
If you feel like it's not enough, you can go over it once again, but don't be as intense as I was in here, just cutting it over and over again. Um, yeah, <laughs> it might lead to actually damaging your uh, material. I would maybe even recommend putting some protective foil over your uh, magnetic paper so that it doesn't uh, kind of scratch and get spoiled over time, uh, but that's basically up to you. So once I was done with my 10 cm bookmarks, I have proceeded to scoring the longer ones. Just like before, try to find the middle, you can measure it with your uh, ruler, but basically scoring board uh, provides this type of grid. It's an in inches, so I was struggling a little bit. But it was definitely worth it as our final product is done. As you can see the grip is not that strong, it fulfills its purpose, it definitely works as a bookmark, but you can definitely experiment with other magnetic paper brands. So thank you so much for joining me on this little craft adventure, it was definitely so much fun making this bookmark, I think it looks great with the pattern. If you want to explore more and find out on how to make the seamless patterns, go ahead and check out my videos.